Hey, good morning, friends. Uh, this is your brother, Derek Day, <clears throat> and uh, just uh, wanted to uh, share a little bit of wisdom on this Wednesday because uh, there was a video that went out yesterday that was um, done on Facebook Live by a bishop that said uh, that that covering is a service that ought to be compensated. And and I want to deal with this whole issue of covering, and I want to kind of get this out there once and for all. And I dealt with this in a chapter in my book, Deconstructing Religion. And so what you're getting today is the thumbnail sketch of, of what my thoughts on covering is. First of all, there is no such thing as a human being covering another. Now, let me, let me, in terms of a kingdom way, because here's the thing, as a husband, I cover my wife, I protect her, I provide for her, and, uh, and, I, and I do things to adorn her. This is what I do for her. My sons, I raise them, I provide for them, I feed them, clothe them, house them, and that's what I do as a father. And so in that sense, I cover them. But let me give you an example. My oldest son moved out last week, or not last week, actually this week he moved out and uh, got his own place, glory to God, and he's paying his own bills, glory to God. Uh, so, so I don't cover him. And, and, and in, the re in reality, although he is my son and we still have that relationship he is a man like i am a man and therefore in the scheme of manhood uh, he and i are peers i am no longer his superior and 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 watch this as as a father now that he's out on his own i have no expectation of him at any point ever supporting me i told him and i tell all my kids this that if you make it big in life and you decide you want to do something for me you want to buy me a car or buy me a boat that's fantastic but you don't have to ever worry about taking care of me as long as I have the ability to take care of me why because I'm a man and that is my responsibility to take care of myself it is not your responsibility as my son to take care of me now if on the other hand I am incapable of taking care of myself then fine if, if that is in your heart to look after dear old dad, then that's great. Now, I want to cover a few things real quick. Number one, uh, people say, well, you know, you got to have you got to have covering in order to have uh, a, a protection. That if you don't, if you leave your covering or if you run from under your covering, that God may get you. Let me tell you about this. See, first of all, uh, covering, there is one covering, only one, and that is the Holy Spirit that was imparted to us by the blood of Jesus. That is the covering for the church. That is the covering for every believer. It, it, there is no man that can substitute that. Are you with me? So here's, <laughs> if, if, if someone tells you that you need protection and that's why you need covering and that you have to pay for this protection well brothers and sisters that ain't kingdom that's mafia that's la cosa nostra are you with me that ain't that's that's triad that's that's you know that's something else that's syndicated crime that's not kingdom you have to pay for protection give me a break Number two, that uh, that if you um, if you don't have covering, you don't have uh, an authoritative relationship, or if you're under uh, under someone's covering, that you can only say and do what they allow you to say and do, and, and you know that, my friends, is not kingdom. That's child abuse. Number three, that if you are under this covering that you tithe up to who covers you who in turn ties up to who covers them who in turn tithes to whomever covers them well brothers and sisters that ain't kingdom <laughs> that's multi-level marketing 
y'all got to catch this because see, this whole thing about covering is a man-made doctrine. There is no scriptural support for it unless you do something that is called eisegesis, which means you're reading into the scripture what you want it to say. There is no mandate for covering. There is no requirement for covering. Now watch this. Let me say this because my brother Anthony Calloway taught on this on a conference call last night and he absolutely knocked this one out of the park because the deal is, is that in the kingdom of God, we are all mutually accountable to each other. There is a horizontal level of responsibility to each other. And that is the relationship that we're supposed to have. I have a vertical relationship with God through Christ. And that is the extent of my vertical relationships. Now, I have horizontal relationships with the other bishops and pastors whom I'm in covenant with. And I make myself accountable to them as they make themselves accountable to me. But at, at, at no point do I even um, surmise to, <laughs> to cover anyone. That's not what I do. That's not what anyone should do. And, and, and here's the thing. This, this whole concept of, uh, of covering as, um, as something that, uh, that, that represents the kingdom of God, watch this. Jesus had a, had a vertical relationship with the Father. But do you see that he established horizontal relationships with his disciples? Now watch, if that's good enough for Jesus, y'all, that's good enough for us. <laughs> there, there is no need to maintain these vertical relationships where I, I, have to, uh, I have to pay honor or homage to this person or that person. You know, listen, I, I pay honor to, uh, to people uh, whose lives have, uh, have impacted mine, whose ministries have impacted mine, and I give, I give honor where honor is due. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm not under any obligation to obey any person. I'm accountable to God. And, and, and my children are accountable to me as long as they are in my house. At that point, it ceases to, to uh, it, uh, that, that vertical relationship stops. And, and, and again, I want to say this because, see, here's the thing, that if you are a spiritual parent, then you ought to be taking care of your spiritual children. You ought to be feeding them, clothing them, housing them. You ought to be nurturing them, grooming them, and growing them. These are the things that you, as a spiritual parent, ought to do. And, and, if, and if you have those roles reversed where uh, you, you have all these, see people, and I, it, it tickles me because people will brag about all these spiritual children that they have and how, oh, my spiritual children, they, they look after their father, they look after their mother. Look, stop that. Y'all just cut that out. That's foolishness. Because the, the reality is parents take care of their children, not the other way around. You don't beget children with the anticipation that they're going to take care of you. You beget children so that you can impart something to them to impact the world. Now, I'm going to say this one last thing. Covering as it is practiced by people today is better called smothering. Because I, I've, I've, there was there was another brother who uh, who posted something on Facebook yesterday that said how uh, he was unable to um, to express the ministry that God gave him because every time he would suggest something or try to do something that his pastor would throw a wet blanket on the whole thing and y'all listen that is that is smothering because the ministry that God gave you is the ministry God gave. You. It's not the ministry that God gave him or her. And you have to be faithful to do with what you have to do. You have to be a faithful steward of what God gave you to do. And that ain't, that ain't anybody else's responsibility. Now, here's the thing. that, that I believe that a good 
pastor or leader or bishop or apostle or any, any ecumenical leader that his or her job is to sharpen the gift of everyone that they are in covenant with. That is the job. It's not to smother them. It is to, is to release them. It's to equip them. It's to empower them. It's to exhort them so that they are able to do what it is that they are called to do. Now, as a pastor, I don't cover the congregation that God has blessed me with. That's not my job. My job is to equip them to preach the gospel. That is my job. And I will protect them. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to allow anyone to just come in and do or say whatever they want to them. But it's I'm I'm not covering them. And I can't tell them what to do. Look, these folks are grown. <laughs> you don't tell grown folk what to do. I don't care. You know, you can put any kind of spiritual spin on that you want. But there's a there's a a, a deep theological term for that, and that's bovine effluvia. So I'm gonna close with this, right? And and I'm I'm gonna use the illustration because God has given me the kind of vehicle that will allow me to do this illustration. But but watch this. Here's the thing: covering smothers. But watch this: when you have covenant relationship and and, and horizontal relationship, and and you're you're able to uh, to share things in a covenant way. This is what happens. You take the ceiling off. See, that's the problem with the body of Christ today. There are too many doggone ceilings. There are too many uh, restrictions. There are too many things that bind and restrict. God wants us to take the limits off. And covering is just another limitation. Are you with me? I hope that that blesses you. And and uh, you know what? I'm gonna tell you something. I, if, if that if that if that if if this is something that you can get down with and you can agree with, then hey, say amen to that. If you don't agree with it, well, say ouch and repent. But I'm gonna tell you something. That, you know, covering is a man-made doctrine, and it has no place in the body of Christ. And if you want to catch more details on that, look at my book, Deconstructing Religion. There's a whole chapter on this. I deal with this in, in, in great detail. But I'm going to tell you something. Covering is not of the kingdom of God. Period. Amen. God loves you and so do I. Y'all have a fantastic, wonderful, and blessed day.